The debate over Israel Folau's sacking and fundraising has truly divided the nation. Just about everyone has an opinion, but amid all the drama and fury over the broader debate, it's easy to forget what Folau's case is actually about. He is, for many, a role model. He's a person in a position of influence. And I think that uh, with that comes responsibility. While there are plenty of takes on his Instagram post and crowdfunding campaign, how the argument will actually be decided is about workplace law, and it comes down to one central, unresolved legal question. Just how far does somebody's right to religious expression extend? It's complicated because this has never been tested before. So, quick recap. Rugby Australia terminated Falau's contract in May after a tribunal found he had breached its code of conduct. That was by publishing an Instagram post telling gay people, along with others who were living in sin, that they would go to hell unless they repented. So Rugby Australia will argue that Falau agreed to a code of conduct when he entered into a contract to play with them. Lots of workplaces have these codes of conduct, and Falau said that he would treat everyone equally, fairly and with dignity, regardless of a number of factors including gender, sexual orientation and religious background, that he would use social media appropriately and not as a means to breach any of the expectations of his code of conduct, and that he would not make any public comment that would likely be detrimental to the best interests, image or welfare of the game, or act in a way that would bring it into disrepute. When you look at those points, and especially considering Falau has been spoken to before about his social media use, it's reasonable to conclude that he did break his contract. And that's where those on Rugby Australia's side see the case as pretty cut and dry. But what makes this case unique and is central to Falau's counter argument is his religion. Even people who don't share my beliefs have defended my right to uphold and express them. Falau has launched his claim under a section of the Fair Work Act that details all the reasons an employer can't use to terminate a worker's contract. And one of them is religion. He'll argue that when he made that Instagram post, he was practicing his religion and that Rugby Australia can't sack him for it. In its application to the Fair Work Commission, Falau's legal team said that as a manifestation of Mr. Falau's religion, he is compelled to communicate the word of God and that he considers doing that a loving gesture to others. So he'll say, okay, I entered into that contract in the code, but I'm protected by discrimination law. So it's not as simple as those on either side might think, but the problem with reaching a conclusion here is that untested question. How far does freedom to practice one's religion extend? There simply isn't a precedent to tell us how far Falau's rights will take him in this scenario. Really, we don't know how it will be resolved. Falau wants $10 million of compensation, Rugby Australia clearly doesn't want to have to pay it. A lot of people in the know are predicting that after the Fair Work Commission hearing, the case could go to court, but would more likely end up settling. If that happens, it means there's no acceptance of liability on either side, that the settlement agreement stays confidential, and that crucial question remains unresolved. But that's not certain either. Whatever the outcome is, it's going to be very, very closely watched.